Hello, and welcome to our Triple Seat New User Training for Bookings. We are going to cover a few different topics, including creating a lead, converting a lead to a booking, adding events to a booking, sharing and detailing documents, and closing out that booking. This video is for users who utilize the new booking button and work predominantly on the booking level. In Triple Seat, a booking is a series of related events that can span across multiple days and uses booking documents. A booking is the container that holds events. The size of that container is determined by the booking dates. An example of a booking is a wedding. For the wedding, we would have the rehearsal dinner one day, the following day we might have the ceremony itself, and then the next day we would have a send-off brunch. So we have three events associated with that one overall booking. We are going to start with leads. The new lead button is for internal leads. So if someone calls, emails, comes in person, this is where I want to fill out my lead. These forms are similar to the lead form that is hopefully already up on your website. When I fill out a lead form here, I will fill in the contacts information. Under event details, I will fill in the information for the first event in the booking. The nature of event will become the booking name once converted. Any new leads, whether they come from the lead form on my website or the new lead button that I just showed, will appear on the dashboard. This updates in real time. Leads will stay on the dashboard until someone has clicked into and viewed the lead. I can always access all leads in my leads tab, located on the left hand side of my triple seat screen. When I am interested in learning more about the lead details, I will click on the lead to review the information. I can see the contact has been entered, the booking dates are September 23rd through the 25th, and the events of the booking are below. If I am interested in taking this piece of business, I can start a discussion with the contact, which will carry over to the booking. I can start an email from scratch or use one of my email templates and settings. It is important to note that leads are not bookings yet. They are just inquiries. Leads are not on the calendar, they don't have documents associated with them, and they cannot take payments. Once I have heard back from this lead and qualified it, I will convert it by clicking here. I can convert it into just an account and contact, or most often, I will be converting it to a booking which creates all three at once. If I am converting a lead from the new lead button, there will be an option to convert to an event. Always convert to a booking. Clicking the convert button uses the information already supplied by my point of contact to create an account, something that can hold multiple contacts, and a contact, the person I am working with. I can start detailing out this booking. All of the information from my lead will come over to the booking screen. The nature of booking has become the booking name. I can see the account and contact has been added. If I need to add another contact, I can do so by clicking this button here. The next step is to assign a status to the booking. I recommend connecting with your team to find out which booking statuses you'll want to use throughout your booking process. But for us here at Triple Seat, Prospect is a qualified lead and can overlap with other prospects. For example, you can have two prospect conferences as bookings listed for the same dates. It's a step above a lead. You really want to convert leads to bookings as soon as you can, so you can add more information to the booking and keep track of this data if the booking doesn't end up working out. Tentative is holding space. It's when you send a proposal or a contract to one of those conferences to hold their space and dates. Definite is when you receive that signed contract or the deposit has been paid. The booking is definitely happening. Closed means the booking has come and gone. We have adjusted all of our documents and taken all of our payments. Lost is when you can't hold the booking for whatever reason. Once I toggle this to lost, I would also have the ability to provide a lost reason. These can be edited and created in settings. I'm going to leave this booking in the prospect status. Once I have filled out the basic information here, I can move on to booking financials that apply to the booking as a whole. If I have a flat deposit amount, it is always on the booking as a whole. For food and beverage minimum, I can decide. 
Do I have a minimum for the whole experience, so all of the days and events within the booking? Or do I want to charge an F&B minimum per event, per space? I can't do both. For this event, I will charge an F&B minimum per event, so I will leave this blank. If you always use F&B minimums on the event level, check out this video about setting up dynamic minimums in settings. Next, I want to fill out any other deposit information such as dates or custom fields that merge into my documents and billing widget. If I want to include any additional information about this booking, I can do so in the additional information fields. Now I will detail out the events for the booking. The events came over from the lead. I will be able to edit this in the events grid once this booking is saved, as well as add more events. But I want to fill out a few specifics here. I will assign the space and include the event type. I also want to assign statuses for my events throughout the booking process, keeping in mind that events can have different statuses than the booking. And again, any financial information, if I have financials that just apply to the event level, per event, per space. Since I set up dynamic F&B minimums in advanced location settings, they have populated here for the space I chose. The rental fee will always be on the event space. The other financials on the right will be filled in once documents are created and I've added billable items. Scrolling down to the next events, I will assign the space, event type, status, and financials. Now I am ready to click create to create the booking. This booking went from a lead that came in via the website and was accessed through the dashboard. I had a discussion with the lead, qualified it, added some more details, and converted it to a booking. Let's say that someone came to me. They want something that weekend or I know them. I can always skip past that new lead button and create the booking by clicking on the new booking button and filling out that same information. Best practice is to start all bookings as a lead so I can have more accurate reporting, such as through a lead conversion report. Now I'm going to go back to the conference that was just converted. On the booking details page, I can see I have a few tabs to work out of. As a reminder, any discussions that I had with the guest during the lead stage will come through. Let's say I've had some discussions with the guest and they want to see some menus. So I'm going to edit the booking and change that status to tentative. I want to hold the space for them and press update. I might go back and forth again with the guest and now they're ready to sign a contract. So the next step is to add documents to the booking, which will be done through the booking docs tab. I will hover over the add docs button and select the booking documents. I will select which events to include in these documents. For this example, I'm going to select all because I would like to have all the events showing in the documents for this booking. I will click continue, and now I am in the booking contract and event order template. The template is essentially the edit mode for the documents. On booking documents, I will always have a booking tab on the left, preview tab on the right, and tabs for each event within the booking in between. I will detail the events out later, but right now I just want to build out a contract. That is going to happen in the booking tab. This is where I'm going to detail out the information for booking specifics. Scrolling down, I can see a timeline, any special instructions, any staff notes, and any billing notes for the entire booking. I also have the billing widget for my booking, which will break out the subtotal in taxes and fees. Scrolling to the bottom is my term section. I want to make sure to have the correct terms and conditions in this section if I have different terms, depending on the venue or booking type. When done, I will click Save. My documents have been started, but right now, just the contract is ready. I was just in the template. If I wanted to go back into the template and continue editing, I can click on the template name or click the gear icon and edit. I will now click into the contract layout to take a look. All of this information comes from the booking and the information I added into the template. At the bottom, I can see the signature field for the guest to sign. From the booking docs tab, I will click the share button to the right of the contract. This is going to work just like a discussion email. 
I am sending them an email with a digital link to the document, in this case, the contract. I will click next, select my contract email template, and send. As soon as I started a discussion with my guest, they received access to their guest portal. The link to the guest portal is at the bottom of every discussion message sent through Triple C. I can access the guest portal view by clicking Actions, Guest Portal. From the guest view, this is what they will see. The guest portal overview tab will show all events associated with this booking and any recent activity. In the documents tab, they can see any documents that have been shared with them. In the discussions tab, the guests can send messages as well as view any of the discussion messages I've sent to them. In the payments tab, if I am integrated with one of our credit card processors, such as Triple C Party Pay, my guest has the ability to pay online as well as authorize a card or bank account. Lastly, in the task tab, they can see any tasks that I've assigned to them or add tasks themselves to help stay organized. Once the guest goes to their guest portal and signs the contract, I will be notified through my notifications and it will show in the booking docs tab. If for some reason I didn't mean to send it or I need to change something, I can click on share here to break the link and Triple C will keep a signed version. Now that a contract has been signed, I want to move the entire booking to definite. We will go forward a bit in time, and now the guest has sent a message saying they need to make some adjustments. To manage my events and make changes or adjustments, I want to head to the Events tab, where I can use the Events grid. I can first adjust how I view the grid. By selecting the Columns button, I will add the F&B minimum and move it up so I can view it on my screen. The guest wants to shift the meeting times by 30 minutes and add two breakout sessions to make these changes, I can select the two meeting events, click Adjust, and make those specific changes. In this example, moving the start time by 30 minutes. To add the two breakout sessions, I will click Add Event. I'm going to add one breakout session first and adjust the name, time, space, and guest count. Now, I will copy that breakout session. I can make multiple copies to the same day, next day, or through the booking end date. I will make one copy on the same day, and I just need to change the name and space. Since these events were created after I added documents, I want to make sure to select both new events, click Add Document, and select my existing document template. Now, I will fast forward in time to when I have that initial deposit check. I will mark that first payment as paid in Triple C. Marking payments is done in the Payments tab of the booking. I will slide to the right of the first deposit to this gear icon, hover over it, and select Pay. If I had a credit card integration, this payment might have already been made. As previously mentioned, my guest has the ability to pay online through the guest portal, as well as authorize a card or bank account to be used or I can select credit card to enter in a credit card. For more information about the credit card integrations we offer, such as Triple Seat Party Pay, please watch this video. If you do not have a credit card integration, this will not work. You cannot take payments through Triple Seat. You are just marking how that payment was made. So I will say credit card in store, which means the guest paid through my POS system and press submit. Now, it is time to detail out the events and send the BEO. The detailing is going to be done through that Booking Docs tab again and in the Booking Docs template. When I click into the docs, I will select the tab at the top for the event I want to detail. Let's start with adding food and beverage to the welcome dinner. I will select Add from Pick List to add my menu selections for the guests. I will select the items and it's important to check off anything with a price as well as any headers I'd like to show in my documents. I will add these selected items, add the number of guests, and the total price will populate. I also have the option to select this button if I want to add any items freehand that are not already listed on a menu. For beverage, 
My guests would like an open bar, so I will select Add Freehand and write On Consumption. When using this button, I want to make sure to select a category so the appropriate taxes and fees can be applied. I will leave the price blank. When the event is over, I will come back into my documents and update the price. I can also type notes within these text box fields, some that are visible to my guests and some that are internal. Once I have detailed out this event, I can click save and continue to move on to the next event. When I am done detailing out all events, I can head over to the preview tab where I can scroll through all the detailing I have done in one screen. If I need to update anything, I can click on that section here and Triple Seat will bring me back to whichever event tab that area is located. When done, I will press save and then go to my BEO. Similarly to the contract, I will see my booking information at the top. I will see my food and beverage for each day with billing at the bottom. I will share the BEO with my guest the same way I shared the contract. Let's fast forward in time again and say that the events have come and gone, my guests are happy, and everything went smoothly. It's time to close out this booking. It's really important to close out booking so that you can have accurate reporting for actualized revenue and easy rebooks in the future and an accurate guest portal for your guests to view. What is needed to accurately close a booking? Make sure all events are in the past, all charges have been updated, and all deposits have been paid and the balance has been zeroed out. I'll demonstrate this process here before I mark this booking as closed. First, I need to update any consumption items and add any additional items. Best practice is to update as each event date goes by and it's not all in one sitting. But for now, I will go through and update that welcome dinner's open bar charge. I will go into the document, into that specific event, and adjust the price of the on consumption items for beverage. Next, I will make sure that the balance is paid out. I can add other payments by clicking add a payment, or I can always pay out the full balance by clicking here. Save and pay and say credit card in store. Now I will pretend that these dates are in the past and I am ready to edit the booking and mark the status as closed. So that was the life cycle of the booking. I had a lead, converted it to a booking, added documents, added new events to the booking, took payments, and finally closed out the booking. If you have any questions about bookings, please reach out to our support team, support at triplec.com. I also want to point out the help questions button. You can click here and select FAQ to be brought to our knowledge base with lots of frequently asked questions and answers specifically about bookings. Thanks for watching.